I watched the Jaronism NASA movie this morning and was particularly struck by this one quote from Charles Bolden. If the next administration tries to change course and get NASA to lead another manned expedition to the moon, that it means we are probably, in our lifetime, in the lifetime of everybody sitting in this room, we are probably never again going to see Americans on the moon, on Mars, near an asteroid, or anywhere. We cannot continue to change the course of human exploration. This is some serious psychological deception here. The idea is to keep the public hanging on to the idea that we'll eventually go to the moon, or to Mars, or to an asteroid, if only the goalposts would stop being moved every time a new administration came into office. And naturally, each administration comes into power and right on cue moves the goalposts back and forth between the moon and Mars. That was the basic premise behind Jaron's movie. But let's think that out. If President A comes into office and directs NASA to get their ass to the moon, they've got four to eight years to be working on a mission that we did pretty much once a year with no problem back in the late 60s and early 70s, right? So then President B comes into power and directs NASA to get their ass to Mars. Okay, they've now got four to eight years to work on that mission. But then, President C comes into office and says, on second thought, I'd like us to return to the moon before going to Mars. Why on earth would that mean going back to the drawing board and starting from scratch? It's not like they would have just scrapped the eight years of planning they had already done under President A, right? In fact, by the time President C tells them to get their ass to the moon, they should respond, we thought you'd never ask, sir. We have everything drawn up and built and are ready to send up some astronauts tomorrow because surely that's what they were doing during President A's eight years in office, right? Let's say you hire an architect to design a colonial style home for you. He brings you the final draft six months later and you tell him that your wife now wants a ranch style house instead. The architect says, as long as you keep paying me, I'll design as many houses as you want me to. Let me get busy on that ranch home for you. Six months later, he presents you with final plans and you tell him your wife now wants to go back to the colonial house from before. Do you think for a second the architect will say, okay, I'll see you in another six months? Would you be okay with paying his salary for another six months only to be presented with the same colonial home plans he already presented to you six months ago? No, you would call him out as a fraud and take him to court. Of course, that wouldn't happen because in the real world, the architect would say, no problem. I've got the colonial plans from before right here. Let's get started on it. But that's the difference between reality and NASA fantasy. With tens of thousands of employees and subcontractors and a budget of $56 million a day, is it unreasonable to the people who foot that bill to think that maybe NASA could have one team dedicated to working on a manned moon mission while another team works continuously on a manned Mars mission while a third team works throughout multiple administrations on an asteroid mission? Is it unreasonable for us to not only expect them to be working on multiple missions simultaneously, but demand it? That way, wherever the next administration wants to send them, they'll be ready to go at the drop of a hat. Heck, after 60 years and billions of taxpayers' dollars, they should be ready to send men to the moon, to Mars, and to an asteroid all at the same time. But that's not the mission. The mission is to keep stringing gullible people along with the silly idea that we could have been to the moon, Mars and an asteroid years ago if these darned administrations would just stop changing their minds. And so it will forever be a game of telling blind sheep that we will go to these places, eventually. But of course, it'll never happen. In the meantime, space cadets get to continue on with the same feeling one gets from buying a lottery ticket each week. They never win, but during the week leading up to the drawing, they can dream about all the exciting new changes winning is going to bring. That's what NASA is. A lottery ticket that allows gullible people to dream of what someday could be, but never will.